If you are currently leveling up your Django and Postgres skills with this tutorial, you might like to know that this tutorial is part of a whole playlist where you will learn how to, with Django and Postgres, create database level constraints and triggers. If you like this playlist and you would like to learn more about Django ORM, then do check out our Django ORM Mastery course on Udemy. Links to the playlist and course can be found in the video description. For anyone who might be new to relational databases or databases in general, a quick overview of database technologies and that should lead us into a quick overview of Postgres databases. So generally, there are two or two broad categories of database systems, relational databases and NoSQL databases. Choosing between relational and NoSQL databases depends on specific requirements of your application, including data integrity, scalability, uh, query complexity, and development flexibility. So in many cases, a hybrid approach leveraging both types of databases can be an effective solution. Here in Django, generally we talk about and work with relational databases. So a relational database, well, we have already been developing the relational database. If you have been watching from the start, it is a type of database that organizes data into tables consisting of rows, records, and columns, attributes. It employs a schema to define the structure, types, and relationships of the data. And that ensures data integrity through constraints like primary keys and foreign keys. In order for us to work with a relational database, it uses SQL, the Structured Query Language, for querying and managing the data, which supports uh, complex queries, transactions, and joins. So this is ideal for applications requiring high levels of data accuracy, consistency, and complex relational data models. So. This is commonly used in industries like finance, healthcare, and enterprise systems. So here in this course, we're going to be utilizing Postgres or Postgres SQL or Postgres SQL or SQL, depending on what part of the world you live in, will probably depend on how you pronounce it. This is an advanced open source relational database management system. Now there are other open source relational database management systems. Postgres SQL, MySQL, you can also utilize Oracle. These are all relational database management systems. We've decided to use Postgres SQL. It is a very popular open source relational database management system. Now you might be wondering why are we using Postgres SQL when we have already created databases? What were we using? So you may have noticed that Django by default uses a database technology called SQLite. So whenever you make, whenever you create a new Django project and maybe run a migration, then that is the database by default that you utilize. Now SQLite is a lightweight, self-contained and serverless relational database management system. It is widely used for embedded applications and development environments. So unlike most databases, it does not require any separate server process, storing the entire database in a single file on disk. So this is where Postgres SQL is going to be different. So SQLite being a lightweight self-contained and serverless database is ideal for maybe small to medium sized applications, development, maybe some testing, and definitely if you're thinking about embedded systems. So in contrast, Postgres SQL is a powerful open source relational database management system. It is going to be designed to handle complex queries, large data sets, and high concurrency environments. And I'd say in general, concurrency is the core reason why you would move from SQLite to Postgres database, or one of the core reasons. So in high concurrency environments, so where multiple users or processes need to write to the database simultaneously, SQLite will experience performance bottlenecks or contention. Remember, SQLite, like I said, it's just one file. So you can imagine thousands of people or processes trying to read and write to that one file, there's going to be issues. 
So in a nutshell, that's why we're utilizing Postgres SQL. SQLite, the default Django database, remains a valuable tool for development, testing, embedded systems, and applications with modest data management needs. However, like I said, its limitations in concurrency handling, scalability, and feature set make it less suitable for enterprise level applications or those requiring more robust transaction support and high performance under heavy loads. So understanding these weaknesses helps in making informed decisions about when to choose SQLite versus other database solutions.